If you have ever taken time to count your blessings, you know that it's a humbling experience to pause and consider all the gifts that God has bestowed upon us. He has given us the food that we eat, the clothes that we wear, our families, our friends, our homes, and even more than that, He has given us salvation, the forgiveness of sin. He's given us peace. He's given us His love. He's given us His Word, the Bible, and He's given us His presence with us. There is something so special about thanking God for these gifts. And what's even more special is that there is one annual holiday when we are invited to celebrate God's generosity and the gifts that He has given us. This holiday in Hebrew is called Shavuot, which literally means weeks. You may know it better as Pentecost, which is the Greek for 50. These names are taken from the command in Leviticus 23 verses 15 and 16 to observe this day by counting seven weeks and one day or 50 days from the Passover and first fruits offering. Now the reason this is a day of celebrating God's gifts is that in biblical history, the Lord gave two significant gifts on Shavuot. First, he gave the Torah to Israel at Mount Sinai, which is recorded in Exodus chapter 20. From the time Israel left Egypt on Passover, in the middle of the first month, up to the time that they gathered together at the foot of Mount Sinai, which Exodus 19 verse 1 tells us it was in the early days of the third month, we can calculate about 50 days. At that time, God began to literally shake things up. There were thunder and lightning flashes and a thick cloud upon the mountain and a very loud trumpet sound so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. Now Mount Sinai was all in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire and its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked violently. Today, Jewish communities observe this holiday with special synagogue services and prayers. They read the Book of Ruth, they eat lots of dairy desserts, and they have all-night Torah studies and celebrations. All of this is done with a particular emphasis on recognizing what is considered the greatest gift that God has ever given to Israel the Torah. But what is it about the Torah that is so special and unique? The Torah, or more literally God's teachings and instructions, served many roles for the people of Israel. It's a moral guide that sets Israel apart from all the other nations. It helped shape the culture. It defines sin. It introduced a fair and righteous justice system. It also outlines the process of redemption. The sacrificial system shows how innocent blood atones for the sins of the guilty. Ultimately, the Torah equipped the children of Israel to fulfill their mission in life as a nation. And what is their purpose? To be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. That is, to be a light to the nations, to share God's truth with their pagan neighbors. In many ways, Israel was supposed to be evangelical. Even the location of the land of Israel was strategic for that mission. Israel, about the size of New Jersey, sits at the crossroads of three separate continents, Europe, Asia, and Africa. And there are two ancient major trade routes that pass directly through the land of Israel, connecting these three different continents. As the ancients would travel these routes, they would pass through the land of Israel, and the expectation was that they would see and experience the love, justice, and righteousness of God being lived out as Israel put the Torah into action. Now, unfortunately, when we look at history, we see that Israel did not succeed in that mission. Having the Torah written on tablets of stone was not enough. It needed to be written on hearts of flesh. It was not until the second major gift given by God on Shavuot that we see this worldwide impact take off and hearts begin to change. In Acts chapter 2, the disciples were gathered together in Jerusalem on Shavuot. This assembly took place shortly after Yeshua became 
our Passover lamb when he died for our sins and rose from the dead as the first fruits of the resurrection. In Acts chapter 2, a Sinai level event occurred. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Just as at Sinai, there were mighty elemental sounds and shakings going on in Jerusalem. And just as at Sinai, things began to change dramatically for God's people. The Holy Spirit was poured out, and we see that the Holy Spirit functions as a moral guide, convicting us when we sin and shepherding us in righteousness. He sets us apart and equips us so that we can take the message of redemption and forgiveness to the nations. God's own Spirit began to dwell within the hearts of believers. In fulfillment of Jeremiah 31 verse 33, the Torah was now written on the hearts of those who believe. We see the most significant change in Peter, who in John 21 3 was ready to return to the life that he knew before Jesus by going fishing. Now though, in Acts chapter 2, Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, stands up and delivers an impassioned apostolic sermon to thousands of Jewish people present in Jerusalem. On that day, a revival was sparked as 3,000 came to believe in Yeshua. Peter was now a fisher of men. So this year, as Shavuot approaches, let us pause, let us take inventory, and let us give thanks for the gifts that God has given us. Thank Him for the redemption that we have through our Passover Lamb Jesus, for the resurrection to eternal life that is promised to us, and for the gift of the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us. It is His Spirit that now empowers and gives us all that we need to take the message of truth to a world that desperately needs it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. If you enjoyed what you just watched, please like, comment, or subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great teachings, videos on our work, and the latest updates on our ministry. If you'd like a copy of a free book I wrote entitled Isaiah 53 Explained, then please click on the link provided, and I know that you'll receive it and enjoy it. So God bless you, and Shalom.